Today, we are going to talk about how to talk about photography, about the pictures. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Urban Anjar and this is Photography 101, the free and open photo course for all beginners. Please help yourself and help me by liking and subscribing this video. Why should we talk about how to talk about photos? And why should we try to analyze photos? One reason is to reverse engineer. That is, if you see a photo that you somehow like, you can watch it thoroughly and systematically to find out how the photographer made that picture and include something similar into your picture. But it's also a way to help each other improve as photographers. We need to go beyond the good, bad and ugly. This is not a spaghetti western anyway. So we have to analyze. And that means separate the different parts of something. You can begin looking at a random picture from the newspaper or whatever. What's, what's the subject in the picture? What's in the background? Is there a foreground? And how is the composition? How is the different pieces laid out in the picture? Is it complex? Is it crowded with different stuff? Or is it simple? Is it just one thing with a white background, for example? And where in the picture is the subject? Is it perfectly in the middle or to the side or almost outside the picture? And where is the horizon? Is that in the middle or high or low? Can you see any movement in the picture? How is the picture framed? Are there any things that frame the subject in the picture? Is it taken close or more far away? Is there any negative space? Large parts in the picture with, for example, the sky. Are there any lines pointing to your subject? And what can you see of shapes and forms and textures? And how is the picture lit? And, and that might be the perfect time for me to apologize. My mm, headlight here died just before recording, so now it's a little bit... Now it's not the optimal lighting, but you can see here that it's light coming in in this direction. But is the light natural or artificial, soft or hard? Is there one or many sources? In what direction has the light? If you have trouble to see the light, it could be easier to watch the shadows. And if you zoom in to the eyes, you often can see how the picture is lit. There can be signs in a picture. We can see images as a language. And there is a spe special academic subject called semiotics or semiology analyzing the signs in pictures. And there are at least three different sorts of signs. They can be icons. This is not a cap. It's a white surface that shares the shape with an actual cap. Compare with René Mar Marguerite's painting Cécine Pime Pip. We recognize the icon from its similarity with real-world objects. Another thing is an index. With indexes you need to be a little bit of a detective and draw conclusions of the signs you see. And by language index and indicium are relatives. You don't see any people in the house but light is on and it's smoking from the chimney so they are probably around somewhere. Another thing is 
a symbol. You have to learn the meaning of symbols. The Swedish flag is blue with a yellow cross. And there is one more symbol there. The cross is a symbol of Christianity. And you learn that red light in the street means stop. That's not a built-in property of the red color. And at sea, red light means something else. It mean, can mean the port side of a boat. That's the left side. And in politics, red has one meaning in Europe and the opposite meaning in, in the USA. So symbols are something you learn, but also depending on the context. And then we have denotation and connotation. And sometimes also some personal experience. Denotation is what's actually in the picture. And now here, here we see a plush toy and a pointing device to a computer. The connotation is depending of our cultural experience. What we have learned from books and films and uh, art and whatever you, we have taken part of. And then we might see two mice making more mice. Then we have some personal experience. Someone might say, I hate computers and refuse to watch the picture because of the pointing device. How should we approach someone's pictures? They may be asking for critique. I think we need to be kind and constructive and specific. Kind, we don't want to scare people off doing photography, do we? No. And constructive is what can you improve? And specific is not just saying, oh, this is a beautiful picture or this is a bad, ugly picture or whatever. Point at what's right and what you think needs improvement. And ask questions. Maybe you haven't understood the meaning with the picture. What's your intention? Why did you choose to? What feeling are you trying to convey? Or something like that. And before you say something about the picture, you need to have at least two things in the picture that you like. For one thing that you think needs improvement. If you haven't got anything positive to say, scroll to next, take a break. You're probably not the target audience. The risk is huge that you make an ass of yourself. And receiving unfair critique. At least you might feel that it's unfair. Breathe and listen. Take notes, ask questions, don't fight back and avoid trying to explain. Then you go home, let it take some time, think it over. Maybe you should change something. Change something in post and repost the picture in an improved way or say what you learned and uh, use it the next time you shoot something similar. Or maybe just throw away your notes, keep doing your thing and because it's your camera and your pictures, you make the decisions. Okay, I'll show you some pictures from this weekend after I said goodbye. goodbye. This was all for today. See you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.